On September 21st, Lockheed Martin unveiled a futuristic-looking unmanned aircraft named Vectis. In Latin, said word means a lever, a crowbar or a pole. Certainly, its implied use case may be roughly similar to a crowbar, prying open enemy defenses and leveraging manned systems so the whole air formation can win. Unmanned fighter jets, or as the US Air Force likes to call them, collaborative combat aircraft, will serve alongside manned jets in the 2030s and beyond. But let's first define what Vectis is not. It's not a Pentagon-funded project. It's not explicitly designed for the US Air Force's collaborative combat program. It's also not yet a physical aircraft. The first prototype is to fly in two years' time. So right now, it's a digital model with perhaps some early leading items being procured for the manufacture of a prototype. Now, what Vectis is. It's designed by Lockheed's famous Skunk Works, a secretive design department that worked on many high-end aircraft, like the U-2, SR-71, F-117, RQ-170 and others. Lockheed said the plane is designed to be versatile, flexible, reusable and highly survivable, and that it will be offered to various potential customers. Skunk Works said it was developed for US and international markets based on feedback they heard from multiple customers. That includes the US Air Force for its upcoming Increment 2 CCA competition, as well as various international partners. Lockheed clearly hopes this could be its default accessory product for the F-35, to be paired up with it come 2030s. In further details shared by Lockheed Martin, it was said to be designed for air-to-air, -air, air to surface and surveillance missions, obviously with different payloads per mission. OJ Sanchez, general manager of Skunk Works, said Vectis leverages work Lockheed did on sixth-generation fighter demonstrator plane, the RQ-170 and other classified systems. Binkov believes Lockheed's gold-plated Increment 1 CCA might also have something to do with it. Sanchez focused on a particular point. Quote, Vectis unlocks new capabilities at an ultra-competitive speed and price point and provides best-in-class survivability at the CCA price point. The speed comment refers to ease of prototyping and production. Aircraft itself is almost certainly subsonic. Sanchez said that Lockheed analysis showed that supersonic ability is not necessary. Indeed, one of Lockheed's promo videos showed Vectis internals, showing little room for a long engine with an afterburner section usually needed for supersonic performance at a low price. Vectis seems to be larger than the current Increment 1 CCAs, but Sanchez said it's smaller than an F-16. Again, if, and this is a huge if, this shot from Lockheed promo video is taken at face value, it seems to be approximately 38 feet long with a 40-foot wingspan, give or take a few feet. While the wingspan may appear longer than F-16s, it's still likely overall a much lighter aircraft. Its large size and fairly short engine means there is likely a fairly spacious weapon bay in there, which again translates into mission flexibility. This video screen cap moment suggests the bay is little longer than what's needed for an AMRAAM missile. At another point in the promo video, Lockheed's own low-cost cruise missile truck was shown, fired from Vectis it too likely fits in its weapons bay. The plane itself is fairly interesting, featuring a lambda wing, no vertical control surfaces, and a visible chine around its frontal section. It's likely comfortably more stealthy than any of the Increment 1 CCAs Air Force is exploring. Whether it will prove to be still too much gold-plated and too expensive for the Air Force once the Increment 2 competition comes, that remains an open matter. Whatever the outcome, the US aerospace sector is intent on showing it's capable of rapid prototyping and production of high-end aircraft that don't need to cost an arm and a leg. And remember, Binkov may talk about war, but only real peace can bring us all together.